So this video is going to be the first video in a series on work where we describe some physical applications of integration and calculus. And so in this first video, I want to kind of introduce to you the idea of what work is, which work is defined as applying a force over a certain distance. And so I want to kind of introduce this idea by, by presenting you with the kind of real world example of what happens if you're pushing a shopping cart? Well, Shopping carts aren't particularly very heavy and they're on wheels, so they roll pretty well. So in this situation, I can apply just a little bit of force, a little bit of energy, and I can exert it over long distances and perform tons of work. Now, on the flip side, what happens if I am trying to push a very, very solid like concrete wall? Well, you can stand there and you can push and push and push all day long and you can exert all of the energy you want into that wall to try to move it but it's a solid concrete wall it's not going anywhere and so in this situation since the wall does not travel any distance whatsoever you are technically speaking not doing any work even though you are exerting energy and so that's something to keep in mind when we talk about work is its force over a distance and so if i have a constant force f and I'm exerting it in a specific direction, and my object travels d distance in that direction, then the work that we've done is actually going to be the force times the distance traveled. Now, this is, again, very similar to the last video where I talked about density and mass, where if I have a density of a one-dimensional object and I multiply by the length of that one-dimensional object, I get its mass. So the same thing kind of works here, is if I know the force and I multiply by the distance that object has traveled, then I should get the work. Some common units for force that I see most often are, if I'm talking about SI units, we have the units called Newtons. Now, this is technically speaking kilograms times mass per second per second. So it's actually a unit of mass, kilograms, times meters per second per second, which is an acceleration. Um, for the U.S. standard, we typically see the unit of force is pounds. Um, that's not a unit of mass. That is a unit of force. Uh, or another way to say it, a better way to say it might be weight, because we're considering the mass of an object and its gravitational pull, how much acceleration due to gravity it is. So again, that's the unit of weight or force here. Um, another common thing we need to look for is common measures of work. So the most common one that I see in SI units is called joules, which is just represented by a capital J. Um, when we find it, since it's force times distance, it's technically newtons times meters, which can also be written as kilograms times square meters per second per second. Um, but again, joules is the, typically the way we write it. Um, for the U.S. standard, it's foot pounds. So it's the measure of feet, our distance, times pounds, our force. Um, I've also seen it as inch pounds, but foot pounds is definitely more common. Um, in our first example, I want to find the work done when a unit, or excuse me, when a constant force of 12 pounds is exerted on a chair to move it from 0 0.9 to 1.1 feet. And so notice the total distance that this chair is actually traveling is 0 0.2 feet. So the work done is actually going to be 12 pounds times 0 0.2 feet, which is going to give me 2.4 foot pounds of work. So that's going to be my final answer. Now, just like when we talked about density and mass, what happens if it's not a constant or uniform force? What happens if, for instance, I'm pushing that shopping cart up a hill? If it's a very, very uh, shallow or not very steep hill, it's not going to take nearly as much work as when I get to a steeper section, and it takes a lot more energy, a lot more force to push it up uh, into that higher elevation. So the work done by a variable force F in moving an object along a line from X equals A to X equals B in the direction of the force is going to be given by an integral from A to B. So again, those are my X values representing distance of the force over X dx. And so again, I'm going to kind of backtrack for a second and say, hey, if we're starting at A and we're ending at B, I can kind of divide this section up into small chunks, like infinitely small chunks, that are all a distance of dx. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider how much force does it take to move that really, really infinitely small distance and then kind of add it up using the integration process. Again, integration is very, very similar to a summation. It's just summation with an infinite number of little parts. Um, and so again, what we're doing is we're taking these little tiny dx length distances and figuring out how much force it takes just to move that small, tiny, infinitely small distance. Um, so I'm going to go into my example here, which is what is the work done moving a particle from x equals 0 to x equals 1 meters? Again, that's important. That's my distance. If the force acting on the particle is 3x squared newtons. Okay, so I'm going to set up my integral. And again, our distance is from 0 meters to 1 meters. And our force is 3x squared dx. So again, this is in newtons. And my distance is measured in meters. So I'm going to integrate this like normal. So we're going to do 3x cubed divided by 3. So in reality, I don't even need the 3s. Um, and we're evaluating from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So we'll do 1 cubed minus 0 cubed, which is 1 minus 0, or just 1 newton times meter, which is the same thing as 1 joule. All right. So hopefully that helps better explain the idea of work and how it applies to some of our integration and calculus strategies. I'll see you guys in the next video. We're still going to be talking about work.